I welcome every participant for the third earnings call for this financial year and uh, a sixth earning call uh, since listed. Um, let me start with a very optimistic note uh, to congratulate uh, my operating and finance team for their uh, excellent work, what they have done uh, during this challenging quarter. From the operational side, uh, two of our uh, big states, Tamil Nadu and Andhra, uh, had the burnt of weather. You all know the floods in Tamil Nadu. Despite that, we are able to uh, put our business and collections uh, uh, on, my, on the best foot. And the ERP implementation is completely done. And last quarter, Andhra, Telangana, which is a significant uh, 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 big state for five star, uh, the ERP implementation was being done. With this, the entire five stars ERP has moved from Fin1 to uh, Salesforce. And uh, the November circular, which uh, uh, by the regulator, uh, which uh, brought in a lot of constraints, bank lending on uh, uh, MBFC, and the five star has demonstrated well. So we will look into the numbers. Um, with this, let me get into the uh, as usual, we start with the business side, then we'll go to the collection side. Uh, in the business side, uh, the, we'll start with the branches. We have opened close to 24 branches in, uh, in Q3. Uh, with this, the total count of branches opened in first nine months is uh, 111 branches. Uh, it has uh, moved to 480 branches as we stand today. As we said in last call, uh, we intend to open close to 120 branches for this full year, and you will see few more branches in Q4. With uh, with, with very good uh, number of branches getting opened, uh, our distribution uh, was also good, but it was flat comparing with uh, last quarter uh, with 1,210 crores. Uh, but we, if you compare with year on year, we have given a 33% growth in our disbursement. This is in spite of the, 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 the flooding, what we said in uh, Tamil Nadu and coastal Andhra. You are able to manage uh, uh, the good disbursement, uh, which has resulted in a very good AUM growth uh, from 8,264 crores to 8,931 crores with a 8% Q on Q growth and 43% year on year. That has resulted in a good revenue. Our income has moved from 522 crores to 570 crores, which is a 9% uh, growth on Q on Q, and 47% growth in year on year. And also resulted in good profitability, uh, moved from 199 crores in Q2 quarter to 217 crore in Q3, with a growth of 9% and 44% year on year. So with this, let me take it take you to the collection side, which is a very important metric for a lender. Our collection efficiency uh, has been maintained one of the best numbers. We are at 99.1%, uh, comparing to a slight uh, tag low. Uh, in last quarter, it was 100%. And unique customer, which is the which is the which is a very important metric that uh, how much we collect from each customer. Uh, that has also moved a little tack down from 98% to 97.5. Both the collection efficiency and unique customer have seen a very small blip in spite of uh, being a challenging uh, weather uh, conditions in last quarter. Uh, but our 30 plus, which has shown a healthy move, uh, it was at 8.59% in September quarter that has come down to 8.35% in December quarter. Another metric, which is current to arrear as a percentage, uh, was at 86.5 to 13.5, has also improved uh, to 86.7 versus 13.30. So we are itching uh, closer to the uh, number, what we said, 90% current uh, in, the, in, the, in the next financial year, maybe the first quarter of next financial year. And uh, finally, on the IRAC uh, NPA, uh, which is the technical NPA, what we call, uh, and stage three asserts have uh, moved from 1.35% to 1.40%. Uh, comparing to last uh, year, it has uh, dropped from 1.45 to 1.40%. 
So it will be in the ranges on the, the same way. And uh, finally, on cost of funds, uh, the book cost of fund has uh, uh, dropped down from 9.71% to 9.64%. And incremental cost of fund, which is very important metric after the November circular of RBI, uh, has moved from 9.5% to 9.57%, which is just seven bips. Uh, uh, since the circular, uh, our finance team was able to, treasury team was able to get close to 1,500 crores, uh, taking even January into account, uh, with just uh, seven bits of uh, cost going up. So with this, uh, 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 we conclude that the confidence from lender, especially banks to uh, NBFCs like Five Star, has significantly has uh, stood well. Uh, with this, let me hand over the call to Srikant to take, uh, to take us through on all metric further deeper. Thank you. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, as Mr. Pati has outlined, Q3 was a robust quarter for us. Uh, we fed well across the various financial and the operational uh, metrics. Uh, on the branch count, it was a, it was a good uh, quarter for us. So we added 24 branches for the quarter and for the full year we have the last 12 months we have added about 111 branches, so we are at 480 branches as of December 31st. Uh, this has translated into a good uh, dispersal quantum, despite some impact because of the floods in uh, Tamil Nadu and Andhra, and an AUM impact. So our AUM grew by 8% uh, quarter on quarter and 43% year on year. We ended slightly short of 9,000 crores uh, for uh, December 31st. Uh, from a financial metrics perspective, our yields continue to remain stable at around 24 to 24 quarter, uh, despite our average cost of funds dropping uh, marginally. Our incremental cost did go up, did inch up a little bit, but uh, very marginally. Uh, we had a spread of 14.6 for the quarter, as against a spread of 13.8% for Q3 FY23. Obviously, with increasing leverage, the NIMS will continue to drop. So the NIMS dropped to 16.8% as compared to 17.68 as of the previous quarter. Uh, like I said, primary on account of higher debt and increased leverage. We have also been a little conservative uh, during this quarter uh, because of you know the risk weight circulars coming through and the regulatory overtures that are being given. So we maintained a slightly higher li uh, liquidity during this quarter, which in, uh, resulted in increased leverage and lower NIM. If we do a quick back of the envelope calculation, and reduce our debt by about 300-400 crores, uh, our NIMS would have been looked much better. Uh, our NIMS would have been at about 17.4 percent, which would have seen a drop only of about 30 basis points rather than 80 basis points as you're seeing now. Cost to incomes remain range bound. It's actually shown an improvement during this quarter to about 34.5 percent as compared to uh, 38 percent for Q3 FY23. Uh, we have done one of the industry best ROA. Again, ROA will show a contraction with increased leverage, So, but we still did an 8.25% ROA for the quarter and an ROE of closer to 18%. The ROE is increased by over 300 bits year on year and we have about 65 basis points quarter on quarter. So this is probably, uh, obviously you will not see such sharp increases as we go forward, but there will be increases with increased leverage uh, in the ROE. Uh, our borrowing profile continues to be well diversified while we still have a little bit of a higher proportion in terms of bank term loans, but we are very conscious uh, to diversify our borrowings. In fact, during this quarter, we also did one capital market transaction. We issued NCDs for about 105 crores. During the quarter, we received an uh, incremental sanction of close to 1,400 crores and uh, availed about 1,000 crores out of that. Uh, all inclusive cost being 9.57% for the quarter, which is seven basis points higher than the previous quarter number of 9.5%. For the full year, the nine months ended December, we have uh, gotten sanctions of about 3,500 crores and availed about 3,000 crores at an all-inclusive cost of 9.5%, 9.52%, so which is extremely attractive as compared to what has been happening around us in the last 12 to 18 months. We have a liquidity buffer of about 1,800 crores and uh, unavailed sanction lines of another 475 crores. Uh, Mr. Pati has touched upon the collection efficiency, so I don't want to uh, repeat them. But what is important is, across the various stages of assets, we are showing improvement. Our stage 1 is getting better. Our stage 2 assets actually came down to about 6.95% from 7.24%. The 
There was a marginal blip in the uh, stage 3 assets, primarily on account of the uh, floods. Uh, but we also continue to maintain a very robust uh, provision coverage ratio, both on stage 3 and on the overall AUM. Our PCR on stage 3 is at 54.26% and PCR on overall AUM is at 1.62%. Uh, as we have always been guiding you, we would continue to remain optimistically cautious, neither aggressive nor conservative, but we will ensure that the right amount of provisions are being created on our balance sheet. On the restructured book, uh, the book has dropped to about 0.59% of our overall AUM. And even on this portfolio, we maintain a PCR of over 50%, so we don't see any risks coming on this portfolio at all. So all this has resulted in a very strong uh, profitability for the quarter at 217 crores, which is a 44% year-on-year growth. And on a sequential basis, our PAT has gone up by 8% from 199 crores to 217 crores. Net worth almost at 5,000 crores. So, and with the last quarter typically being the best for us and for any other NBFC, we are very hopeful to carry forward this momentum and deliver a strong set of numbers in Q4 as well. On that note, we would like to open out for any questions that any of you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while question queue assembles. And the first question is from the line of Maruk Adajania from Numama. Please go ahead. Congratulations. Uh, my first question is just on the cost of funds. Uh, so you manage your cost of funds very well this quarter, even in terms of incremental cost of funds. How do you move from here on? And what is the portion of the book that gets affected by higher risk rates? So Maruk, on the cost of funds, like we said, uh, we are continuing to be very sharp in focusing on getting the right cost of funds for us. Uh, as you would have seen, the incremental cost came in at 9.57%. Uh, but again, you will probably see some uptick, you know, uh, when I mean uptick, you know, some increases coming on this, both on account of risk face and on account of the fact that we definitely want to diversify our borrowings. Today, about 66% uh, of our loans are from bank term loans. Uh, but when we move to capital markets, the cost tends to be slightly higher. So. We will probably guide you for maybe another 25 basis points increase from here on over the next few, next uh, uh, couple of quarters. So that is the impact on the cost of funds that we see, on the incremental cost. On the book, again, there is still a delta between what we are borrowing today and uh, uh, where the book cost is at. So at some point of time, these will converge and you won't see any further uh, benefits coming through. But with our spreads, I think even an additional 10-15 basis points increase in our book cost is not going to cause any concern for us. Uh, in terms of the risk weights, uh, we have gone, you know, on a conservative basis. We have only bifurcated our portfolio into three parts. One is loans given for business purposes, which clearly do not attract a higher risk weight. Loans given for housing, again, do not attract a higher risk weight. Any other loans which are given for any other purposes, uh, which could be marriage, education, medical emergencies and all that. So that roughly constitutes about you know, 20 to 30 percent of our portfolio has attracted a higher risk weight. So we have seen about uh, roughly you know three and a half to four uh, percentage points uh, uh, impact in our capital adequacy. Uh, we are at about 53 odd percent. If not for the risk weight, we would probably be close to about 57 percent. So just to finish this uh, point, uh, Maruk, uh, um, as we stand today, uh, banks are very vibrant and they are very positive lending to five star. But having said that, uh, uh, board and uh, we have taken a call to move slowly away from uh, bank borrowings to the market borrowings. That will be the plan of action for next uh, 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 three to four quarters. Uh, so that uh, that's where uh, Shikant has given a 25 pips in increase in cost of funds when we move from bank funding to the market funding. Got it. Uh, but uh, just on risk rates, if 25, so basically 25% of your book is uh, affected, but your entire portfolio of bank loans would be impacted in terms of higher cost if at all banks are passed on higher cost or how does it work? 
Yeah, we don't, see we have always been very conservative as far as our PSL classification is concerned. So we have not taken any PSL benefit from any of the banks. So technically, uh, I would say not all uh, Maruts, obviously this does not impact the NCTs, this does not impact the securitization, it will only be impacting the bank term loans, which is like I said about 65-66%. Uh, but having said that, we have not really seen any of the banks come back to us except for maybe one or two banks who have uh, asked us for any increase on our uh, existing facilities. Uh, even post the uh, circular that was given by RBI, we have managed to raise monies at nine half or even sub nine half from some of the marquee names, you know, uh, be it the State Bank of India, be it the Indian Bank. So each of these people have, and some private sector banks as well, they have all given us sanctions at nine half or sub nine half, even after the risk rate circular coming into effect. So we really don't see too much of impact coming uh, on our cost of funds on the book because of the risk rate increase. Got it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rinesh from ICIC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, Congress on a good set of numbers. So just one uh, clarification on our page number 46, uh, you know, wherein uh, we have mentioned that uh, there is inter-corporate deposit uh, with budget finance of around 100 crore. So what is that? I mean, what's the nature of that and why... Uh, you know, sort of, we have put this deposit with the finance. Sir, so, Anish, this is a, uh, what you are seeing here is a typical investment thing. We, our investment policy provides for three avenues of investments. One is fixed deposits of banks. The second is, mm -hmm. uh, or rather I will say four, uh, fixed deposits of banks. We put some money in government securities. We also invest in liquid mutual funds. And very, very selectively, we have taken some names triple A NBFCs, really large NBFCs where we can put monies in their deposits. So that is the intercorporate deposit that you are seeing. This also includes a portion of uh, deposit uh, on a securitization transaction that we have done with Bajaj Finance. So uh, it's, a, it's a pure investment but from an accounting standard we will probably have to classify it as a under the loans because these are with NBFCs and not with banks. Got it. And uh, uh, just on the balance sheet side again, uh, so you know our cash and bank balances have, uh, you know, gone up by almost uh, uh, 500 crore. Uh, so is there any specific reason to keep such a high liquidity, or this is just uh, in the uh, like the presumption of a very high growth in Q4, and hence we want to maintain that liquid balance sheet? Uh, so Anish, like we said, when the circular uh, came in, you know, sometime in November, I think there was a little bit of. Uh, concern on in terms of how this is going to impact supply from the bank side. So we actually went a little bit conservative and took monies ahead of time that we would have wanted. So it's not like if it was a normal quarter, probably we would we would have been 300, 400 crores lesser. But given uh, whatever is happening out at the macro level, we just were a little conservative in terms of taking a little higher funds. So ideally, we would like to maintain about 15% of our AUM in the form of uh, uh, liquid cash and other liquid investments, but we are slightly higher. We are at almost at about 20% uh, this month, primarily because of being a little more conservative and uh, not because assuming, you know, the Q4 will be good. Q4, obviously, we are going to get more monies as well. Like I said, we, we are sitting on almost 500 crores of unavailable sanctions, but some monies we took because we also wanted to lock in the rates. A uh, little bit of apprehension was there in the initial period whether banks will hold on to the rates that they have sanctioned to us. So, probably we took a little more money that we would have, we would have wanted. No, uh, this is fair enough, sir. Uh, lastly, on this, uh, you know, our the geographical diversification, you know, so if you look at, uh, uh, you know, the Andhra Pradesh contribution, uh, which has been uh, increasing over the past one year, uh, which is slightly, I would say, not opposite, but uh, uh, when we uh, talked, you know, we always been mentioning that we'll be growing in another non-southern state. But at least in past one year, uh, that is not happening. So, uh, can you please throw some light on what is happening on the uh, diversification front? So, Renish, uh, we have uh, been consistent in our commentary where we have said that uh, for the next three years, the bulk of the growth is always going to go from south. This is a regional business and uh, south is our strongest uh, hold. So, south will contribute bulk of the growth. In fact, uh, we have been guiding that of the incremental branches which are getting opened, 80% of the branches will get opened in south and 20% will open uh, get in the rest of country, which is what has happened. So of the, all the branches which have got opened in the first uh, nine months, 
80% is uh, in the south, predominantly in uh, Andhra, Telangana, and a little bit in Tamil Nadu. And 20% has come in north south. So, as far as the rest of the country is concerned, we have opened new branches in Rajasthan, we have opened new branches in Uttar Pradesh, we have expanded in Maharashtra, we have expanded in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, but like you have always guided, whenever we enter a new state, and uh, this includes Rajasthan and UP for uh, this year, uh, this is the first mm -hmm. year that we have entered these two states. We will always take at least a period of you know 18 to 24 months to see how this first few branches behave before accelerating the pace in the new states. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, the diversification is on, but you know it's not going to happen in a hurry. So just to add to it, uh, add to it, if you see our presentation, the rest of the country was around 4% of our AUM that has moved to 6% now. So that's the that's a, a significant uh, growth. Even the base was lower. But as Ranga said, uh, we are not in hurry in the rest of the country. We have to learn a lot there, and we have learned a lot in uh, south. So our growth will come from south predominantly for next two years, three years down the line. Got it, got it. And just uh, last one from my side on the on the spread. Uh, you know, so uh, you know, given the way uh, a regulator is behaving over the last couple of months, uh, you know, based on this great uh, some commentary on the NFI lending rate, etc. Uh, do you foresee any uh, regulatory risk uh, on our spread? So, Ranish, nothing as said. Uh, you know, we have we have been uh, talking to uh, the regulators at various forums. They have also been in our office for a regular routine inspection and all that. So I don't think we are getting any concerns from them on the spreads. But like we always have maintained, uh, you know, forget external uh, stimulus or influences. We would like to be a responsible lender. And at some point of time in the future, you know, we are going to be reducing our uh, rates. So hopefully that will sort of, if at all there is anything in the mind of the regulator which we are not aware of at this point of time, even that will get addressed indirectly. Got it, got it. This is very helpful and best of luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chandra Shekhar from Fordility. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, maybe just a question on OPEX up 18% only YOY. Just maybe help us understand what's happening. Have we done? Um, is, is the you know move from people who are uh, collections to business that's largely done? Uh, and that's why uh, that's question one. Um, second is uh, just where are we just in terms of um, our book assets or maybe the onward, uh, the fresh sourcing, uh, the ability to get the UBM certificate and, and then as a result uh, be eligible for the PSL, uh, some, you know, any update around that. And and then lastly, I remember I think the whole idea of not borrowing on NCDs from now right now is because there wasn't enough of a market in itself on the supply side uh, given where our rating is. Uh, so what's the pressure right now itself to uh, look at NCDs? Uh, why not after you actually get a uh, rating increase? Yeah, good morning, Chandra. I'll uh, take up that uh, collection people first. Then I'll ask uh, Shrikant to talk about the uh, OPEX cost, the uh, priority sector, and the NCDs. The question what you asked. Uh, see, from the collections point, as we have been saying uh, uh, that this is the work in progress. There is no timeline that we wanted to fix intentionally because collections are very important. We don't want to take a call on collection and uh, move them slowly towards uh, a productive side, which is the business side. That is work in uh, progress happening. Uh, quite a good number of people have moved from uh, collections to business because our numbers are getting settled. Well, so it will take its time, but I don't want to say any timeline that entire collection team. Obviously, there will not be entire collection team moving towards business because we always want some support to be given to the harder buckets, uh, to the business team through collection uh, specialist team. So that will be there. But the excess what we have today, which we built up after the COVID period, that will slowly uh, go and get mingled with the business, but it will take its own time. There is no time uh, time limit constraint for us or no guidance that we uh, we, have, we have given to the market. It will take its own time, but we will ensure that our collection efficiency and the business productivity is maintained at the best level. Is that why, I mean, right now, while that shift is happening, which is why the open growth is sort of slowed down? You know, eventually, no, no, no. Pick up. No, 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 no. So that's the point I wanted to say. See, OPEX has gone up the same year on year by 18%. But come down. 
18%. It's coming down. I mean, the OPEX is actually, I mean, your AUM is running at 43 and, and upwards of 40 and OPEX yeah. has actually come down. So, Chandra, I think we have also made investments, you know, in the past ahead of uh, time, right? So, you know, those productivities are actually uh, coming through as we speak. So, it is, it's not just because of, you know, collections uh, people get. So, it, it's not just personal cost which is actually coming down. Uh, you know, some bit on the op operational expenses that you're seeing on the technology. Uh, you know, all those things are actually contributing. Uh, you know, more than looking at the absolute quantum of increase, uh, you know, between quarters or between years, I would actually tell you, you know, if you look at the uh, numbers in terms of the cost to income, that will give you a better perspective. Obviously, the cost to income was slightly higher than what we would have uh, liked in Q3 of FY23, which was at 38%. That's come down to about 34.5% as we speak. But the steady state number will be anywhere around, you know, 35 to 37% is the, is the guidance that we are giving. So, uh, it's, I'd say it's more uh, productivity increases and uh, uh, assets getting built out uh, rather than, you know, any of the collection vertical uh, flowing back to the business side. Uh, yeah, secondly on your PSL uh, question, uh, so we are, uh, we have done some initial samples, Chandra, again, not a very representative samples because the numbers are extremely small. Uh, we had tried uh, doing about 100 odd cases uh, into the Udyam registration. What we have also seen is about 80 odd cases have uh, come in where we have gotten the Udyam registration. So the good part that we are seeing is of the business loans that we are actually putting into the registration portal, which is the uh, Udyam assist or whatever, we are getting a good conversion out of that. Uh, but like I said, you know, the sample is too small, so I don't think we'll be able to give you any uh, any representative guidance at this point of time. Maybe give us a quarter or two more, and we'll be able to come back and say that, you know, what is the proportion of uh, incremental book that we'll build, which would qualify for PSL. The initial results are quite encouraging, is all, uh, is all the result that we have at this point of time. Thirdly, on the NCD part, uh, see, one of the things that we've always been saying or which, you know, markets have also been sort of uh, questioning us is on the diversification of our borrowings and especially with the regulator also giving certain statements in terms of wanting the uh, NBFCs to reduce the reliance on bank funding. Uh, we have very conscious, and this was also discussed at our board uh, at various uh, meetings. So very consciously we are taking the call that we would want to start seeing uh, the diversification of our borrowings. Uh, which is why, you know, the first uh, transaction that we did after quite a while uh, of 100 crores, uh, again, this came in at good cost. This came in at a tenure of 36 months. So we have not compromised on the tenure or compromised on the cost. So we are not going to compromise. Obviously, we may compromise a little bit on the cost uh, if good tenures and good quantums come through. But we are definitely not going to compromise much on the uh, tenures. But I think we will give a lot more importance to the diversification at this point of time. If it has to, like I said, push the cost by maybe 25 basis points, I think we have, our PNL has the ability to absorb that. So we are not going to be unduly worried by that. I think the focus has slightly shifted to diversification of borrowings from, you know, market, capital market in the form of NCDs. We are also targeting uh, DFIs. Hopefully over the next couple of quarters we will see one conversion at least. So uh, focus is clearly on diversification. Cost is definitely going to be an important parameter that we will keep uh, tracking. But a marginal increase in cost is something that we are prepared for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dinesh Kulkarni from RDST. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You're clear. Uh, Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, first of all, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, I have a couple of questions here. Uh, first, it's on the branch uh, you know, additions. Like, are we expecting a lower branch addition in this quarter compared to the, you know, the previous one? I mean, like, maybe around 30 is what I'm getting because uh, we're seeing 120 for the whole year, right? If you could clarify on that. Uh, yes, it will be around 120 for the whole year. So we have already uh, opened 107 branches. So uh, mathematically, it's only uh, nine pending. But I cannot uh, 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 precisely say that. We'll be around... Uh, 10, 12 branches which will be opened in this quarter. Generally, at 5 star, the last quarter, the branch opening will be lower. And first two quarters uh, of the financial year, you will see a lot of branches getting opened. 
Okay, that's great. Uh, so then, how should we look at uh, you know the numbers going forward? Maybe not on a quarterly basis, but on a year or year. Is that number of 70, 80 branches per year will that remain in the that range, or will it increase? Can we expect more in? You know? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, this year is a little bit uh, atypical. Usual uh, branch openings will be about 70, 80, but this year, you know, we have uh, we have put the branch openings a little more. We are definitely guided for 120 branches, but we are expecting uh, to open a little more than 120 branches for this year. So you will also see us opening two more branches for this quarter. Uh, it will be at least equal to or slightly more than what we opened in Q3. Uh, as far as uh, next year is concerned, you know we will uh, definitely open at least close to 80 to 100 branches every year. The base is growing, and we are also expanding beyond the south. So we are confident of opening and maintaining the space of close to 100 branches per year for the ensuing two to three years. Now oh, that that's great, that's great. And uh, can you just uh, give some some you know clarification or uh, you know how do we see the employees uh, growing? Because I mean I see you are adding like more than thousand employees every. You know, year or like year to date uh, for this year. So, do we see a similar pace in the growth, or now we are uh, we have matured there in terms of uh, addition? Dinesh, uh, at some level, this is uh, fairly linear, and uh, it's uh, you know it's a uh, it's a brick and mortar model. Uh, we are uh, we rely largely on physical branches uh, existence on the ground. Uh, that's what gives us the control on both business and collections at the local level. So as the branches are growing, you will see this uh, incrementally increasing because uh, this comes with a number of uh, business officers, sales officers, and the supporting services that we have to put at each branch. Uh, so if the pace will be similar. This year is a little bit more, like I said, because of more number of branches. But if you are assuming, let's say we open about 100 branches uh, every year, the increment in number of people will at least be close to um, you know similar number, 1,500 uh, to 1,800 uh, you know, per uh, year. Okay, that sounds great. That sounds uh, awesome. Uh, and then last question: uh, Do we have any AUM guidance there? Reference like, uh, if I remember, you say something like twenty thousand crores a few years back. Uh, do we see a long-term AUM guidance here? So the guidance what uh, we were giving was thirty-five uh, percent growth. Uh, we are very confident that we will deliver that uh, kind of growth in this financial year. Next financial year also uh, taking market opportunity, uh, considering uh, market opportunities, the uh, growth may not be. Uh, 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 it is doable next financial year, but we should consider how the regulatory regime is getting uh, uh, changed. So the the, the concern of uh, exuberant in lending, uh, what is there in the minds of RBI has to be also looked into. From a market opportunity perspective, yes, uh, we we are very positive and we'll be taking up all strides to grow higher. But having said that, we have to keep in mind that uh, how does RBI look into the credit uh, growth of this uh, country? So we should also align ourselves. But we are very confident that we'll be closing this financial year at 35 percent. Of course, next financial year also is going to be in the similar range. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thanks for answering the questions and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishtin Chawate from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, uh, you know, I just wanted to get a sense if you would want to guide uh, you know anything on uh, normalized uh, stage two levels. Uh, you know, in terms of where do you think uh, is a more optimal level that you are comfortable with? I know there has been a steady improvement over time, but uh, what do you think is a more normalized level? For you? So listen, broadly we are saying we want our current portfolio to be at 90 percent, uh, and you know maybe a one to 30 portfolio of another two percent to two two and a half percent if you add, and let's say in a steady state we are at about 1.5 to 1.75 percent of stage three. That leaves you with roughly about five and a half to six percent of uh, stage two is what we think mathematically is possible. Uh, we are still a little away from that uh, is our view. But uh, broadly, I think you will see you could see some more uh, benefits coming through in the next few quarters, and then it will sort of stabilize. Sure. And uh, on ECL coverage on balance sheet, uh, you know, do you, do you think that I mean I know you kind of run down some of the excess uh, encroaches that you have, but uh, you know, just as a as a mark of uh, 
maybe caution of prudence, you know, given the fact that we're doing very well on the operational side, uh, you know, do you think that, that you would want to kind of, you know, create a little bit of buffer at this point? See, we are already, uh, our belief is that we are already sitting with some buffer on this. Uh, you know, I don't want to go pre-COVID, but just to give you a sense of the numbers, pre-COVID, it used to be sub 1%. It went up to 2 to 2.1% during the peak of COVID, uh, both wave 1 and wave 2. And then it has sort of normalized at around 1.6%. Uh, the last few quarters has been broadly steady, you know, 1.6 to 1.65 is what we have been maintaining. Uh, like I said, I think we will neither be aggressive nor be too conservative. I think it will be a lot more realistic. Uh, our belief is, you know, these numbers will keep going down maybe in the next few quarters. Uh, but I think we will probably maintain a stage 3 at uh, 50 or, uh, you know, over 50% and uh, the, the balance coming through. So maybe at around 1, 1.5%, 1.4, 1.5% would probably be a steady state number that we think is appropriate for the portfolio that we are building. Sure, got it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pallavi Deshpande from Shamiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my question. So just uh, two, three here. Uh, first would be on this uh, NC, the 105 crore, the private placement. I just wanted to know, you know, at, uh, what rate and what was the tenure of that. And... Uh, Second question would be, you know, uh, the Tamil Nadu floods, uh, we didn't see much impact of that, uh, uh, whereas the peer uh, uh, small finance bank did see that impact. So just wanted to understand, you know, how were we able to um, avoid any uh, significant impact then? And uh, lastly, on the tech spend, you know, how much would it be? And uh, the sales force, you know, how is the accounting for it uh, done? Yeah, so Pallavi, uh let me take the first and the third one, and then I'll request Mr. Pati and Ranga to answer the second one. On the NCD, like I said, this is we have not compromised on the tenure at all. This is a three-year NCD uh, that we have uh, that we have issued, and the rate, uh, the all-in cost is uh, you know at around nine nine forty-ish levels. I may be off five basis points this way that way, but it's around nine forty-ish levels, which is better than what uh, you know we are borrowing from some of the banks also. So the quantum is. Uh, not what we would have, uh, you know, we would have preferred a bigger quantum, but I think the interest is there. People are willing to put uh, longer tenure monies and given the, uh, given the safety that they are seeing in the company, which means a lower risk premium, uh, the pricing is also attractive. So that's from the NCD perspective, it's for 105 crores that we have done. See, in terms of the uh, tech spend, first of all, you know, we have given the numbers. We have actually spent about uh, 28 crores for uh, uh, this financial year. Uh, this does not include the headcount spend. This is purely the tech spend headcount, uh, both uh, CAPEX and OPEX. Uh, comparative number for FY23 was about 19.3 uh, million, uh, sorry, 19.3 crores, and for the nine months is about 28 crores. So clearly there is a good amount of spend that is going through. See, in terms of the accounting part of it, uh, most of our uh, tech spends are on the SaaS model, which are based on licenses. So there is an implementation cost and there is a licensing cost. The implementation cost is amortized over the life, which is typically five years. The licensing cost is taken uh, on a month-on-month -month basis. And the licensing cost obviously is a step-up model. So as the business grows, there will be uh, the licensing cost going up. So you will, you will see typical this 28 crores going up a little bit in the coming years as well. Uh, this is not just for Salesforce, this is across all the technology spends that we are doing. Uh, amortization of the implementation cost, which is treated as a, uh, you know, sort of a right-to-use asset, and uh, the license cost is uh, taken on a month-on-month -month basis. TN flood. No, on uh, TN flood, uh, see, given the nature of the customers that uh, we serve, most of these customers are earn and pay customers. So. When there is a flood situation and they are unable to carry on their regular businesses, be it opening a Kirana shop or be it uh, rendering some essential services, it naturally impacts their revenues for those uh, few days. Uh, and the floods were fairly intense, uh, you know, in, uh, in in many parts of uh, South Tamil Nadu and in, uh, in and around Chennai. Uh, also in large parts of coastal AP. So we have uh, quite a you know large cluster of branches in these regions. Uh, so, you know, there, these are obviously, you know, these, there will be some delays from collections on uh, people who have uh, not been able to open their shops during, uh, you know, these times. 
but we don't see any long term impact of this they are, they they will quickly be able to bounce back uh, but for those uh, a week or 10 days inability to open their shops there will be some impact in collections and that's what uh, we have seen and so just uh, one last one so in terms of you know what is the target like you mentioned you bring down the bank funding which is 66% uh, so over the next one year where do we see that uh, going uh, and I believe the rest of it is securitization. Uh, who are the clients for that? Right. So, Pallavi, I think uh, at this point of time, we would not want to venture to give you a number per se on this. But clearly, there is a very strong intent to diversify the funding sources. So, you know, like I said, we are talking with uh, AMCs, we are talking with DFIs uh, to do NCD issuances or ECB issuances. We will also deepen the securitization market. So our belief is the 66% will progressively keep coming down uh, and uh, like I said, you know, we don't want to give you a number at this point of time, but you will see gradual drops coming uh, coming in this so that we are able to diversify the funding sources and have, you know, much larger base of uh, sources that we could tap into at any point of time. Right. So thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ajit Kumar from Namora Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congrats for a great set of numbers. Uh, so two to three questions from my side. Uh, circling back to the number of employees, uh, last two quarters we have seen higher number of employee addition with number being approximately 1,200. Uh, so in which area and uh, at what seniority level are we adding these employees? And also, a few quarters back, you had highlighted that attrition level at officer level is high at around 25 to 30%. So, has that come down and what would be the current attrition level at various levels now? Uh, so, that is my first question. Ajit, uh, on, on this, the employee addition is uh, fairly directly proportional to the number of branch openings and the anticipated number of branches that we intend to open. So, if you look at uh, the last two quarters, uh, last two quarters alone, we have uh, you know opened almost close to uh, 90 branches or so that's a significant number so the employee additions are in line with that most of those employee additions are happening at the field level so this will be the officers uh, branch managers uh, and the support staff uh, who are ever manning the branches okay. on the attrition part uh, you know it, it is at similar level uh, you know it has not gone up or it has not gone down of course the uh, issue uh, continues to remain that if at all, uh, you know, the attrition is a little bit elevated, it's more at entry level for us and people who have spent uh, less than a year in five star. Okay, 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 thanks. And, and second question is your average ticket size on disbursement, you know, has remained broadly at around, you know, 0 0.34 million in the last few quarters. I remember earlier you used to highlight that in ATS will grow in at least in line with inflation. So can we expect this ATS to go up from your own or will it remain at the similar level of 0 0.33, 0 0.34 million? So ATS has been going going up. Uh, you know, it has good. It's it. it uh, we are very clear that we are not changing the customer segment whom we are serving. So it is the same set of customers. And uh, the first priority is for us to get the ATS back to pre-COVID level. So if you look at very specifically last quarter, the ATS has indeed gone up. I think if you go uh, decimal wise, it has gone up from about 3.39 lakhs uh, to about 3.44 lakhs. And, uh, you know, that's a steady progress that we have been seeing for the last uh, few quarters. Uh, the first intent is that it will come to about 3.5 lakhs, which is the uh, pre-COVID level. And from here on, we are expecting to grow based on the inflation. Okay, okay, okay. And lastly, one data-keeping question. You had earlier provided data on super branch, which effectively is two branches in an area where there is a good business potential. Uh, so can you please provide the updated number on super branches that is there out of uh, total, you know, 480 branches? Uh, so, I think, uh, you know, the super branch strategy, uh, you know, we are evaluating whether it is it is good for the company to have more super branches or it is good for the company to have more number of smaller branches in an area and that is something that we are still experimenting. So, a number of branches that we opened in the last about two to three quarters, it's a mix of small branches uh, getting opened, you know, in the vicinity rather than making a number of super branches. Because I think the advantage you get with smaller branches is it can be more spread out. Uh, you will have uh, lesser number of officers in each of the branches. So from an OPEX perspective, it's far more easier. You will have uh, an ability to reach out to customers that much more easier and nearer. And of course, from a risk diversification perspective, it's far better. So the current focus is, uh, you know, it's not necessary for us to grow only by opening super branches or only by graduating a branch to a super branch. 
as opposed to that we can also open cluster branches uh, which is what the current focus is on uh, so we are experimenting with both i think uh, you know we will get more clarity on uh, the way forward on this over the next two to three quarters Sure. So, is it fair to say, I mean, proportion of super branch in the total branches could have gone down since you have yes. opened so many branches in last, you know, couple of months? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because all the new branches would have opened, and uh, that's a significant number. These are all normal branches, so the proportion of super branches would have definitely come down. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Thanks so much. Thank. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubhanshu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, three questions. The first one is on the stage three provisions that run 50 to 54 percent for a secured book like us. It sounds out of whack because this should be pretty much the LGD. That's the first question. Uh, second is on what is the uh, uh, net curing rate from bucket one to bucket two this quarter versus say a year ago, what was the number? Third would be, uh, what kind of premium does the bank charge uh, to us uh, above MCLR and EBLR? A blended rate would be okay, thanks. Uh, so, Shubrancho, on the stage three provisions, like we said, we are, we are, we agree with your point, we are probably carrying higher, but then there has also been, you know, some soft uh, communication, uh, you know, from the regulator also, that uh, it is better for us to maintain these provisions at uh, north of 50%. So we have taken that and uh, not not just for us, for all NPSPs. So we have taken that suggestion and we are also building this uh, provision. See, don't, please understand that this is not LGD. Because for us, the way that we, we define is that any loan that turns NPA and if it is not getting cured within a short period of time and now it is it has to come all the way to zero um, for it to be uh, treated as a standard asset. Uh, that would take a long period of time. So during this point of time, it is going to remain as a BD, and uh, the LGD is only taken on loans which have either matured or which are closed. So, uh, so there will be a lot of cases which have uh, probably matured, but where the loans are not closed, but where we are holding the property. So you will never see that loss actually happening. But there is a timing difference between when the loan matures and when we are probably able to settle for some of these loans, which could show a little artificially inflated LGD. So if you look at one of the other data points that they have actually given in the presentation, even on about 5,000 loans which were NPAs at the time of settlement, on the majority of loans we have not lost more than 2% IRR. Forget the question of any principal loss. So there is no way that we will have an LGD of 55% or 54% or anything more than 50% on the uh, stage 3. But we will continue to keep creating these provisions because these provisions are uh, those which will help us in uh, rainy days. So be clear that it's, it's more an accounting thing that we do. The eventual loss, even if you look at from a credit cost perspective that we are probably giving this guidance in the past, would probably be anywhere around 25 to 50 basis points, but nothing beyond that. So there's no question of 50% LGD on any of these NPAs. So that is uh, number one. But we will continue to keep creating provisions. Uh, the PNL offers it. And uh, even after creating these provisions, our credit cost is sub 40 basis points. So, you know, in good days, it's prudent for any lender to create more provisions. So we will continue on that path. Yeah, but see, next curing rate, Shubhranshu, we'll, we'll probably have to come back to you. We don't have a, we don't have a answer right at this point of time, but we will probably uh, come back to you. On the third question, in terms of spreads to MCLRs and uh, EBRs, see, today it is extremely varied. Uh, like, for example, the MCLRs of PSUs are very low. Uh, for example, if you take, uh, if you take a State Bank of India, they will probably be uh, giving us anywhere the spread of 1.5% to 1.75% or so. But if you look at a private sector bank, there are cases where they may be lending at 25 basis points over MCLR. So I think the spread over MCLR or EBR is not a very relevant data point to look at. What is the relevant data point is the overall cost of funds. So this would mean, you know, there are some banks which charge a slightly higher uh, fee because banks are still on the IGAP and not India's and some of them upfront their fees. So there are some banks which are a little more hungry for fees than the others. So you will 
Uh, rather than looking at the spread over NCLR or EBS, we have still not reached the stage where you know we are going to be uh, fighting for that last five basis points. But what is important to look at is the overall cost of funds, which is the number that we are giving in our presentation as well. Uh, thank you for that. Just one observation uh, that, uh, well, you did explain the uh, stage three provisions, but uh, it still looks uh, out of whack for us, the short book that we run. And second part is that uh, we do speak about a strong collection mechanism. So it seems out of back at 50% is too high for a secured book. It seems like it's an unsecured book that we are running, which is not the case. So that, that's my only observation here. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, uh, we uh, uh, again, we face that uh, five star is a fully secured book. And uh, not that alone, 95% of our security is coming from self-occupied residential property and 5% comes from the commercial uh, shops and the vacant lands. So having said that, I think uh, Srikant has explained uh, the regulatory environment around uh, the lenders today and uh, uh, our uh, profitability is also on the good side. So the board has taken a clear call that uh, to have a good provision at the time when we have afford to do it. Uh, so that will help us as we move forward towards the uh, challenging times. So keeping that uh, advice in mind, uh, uh, we have gone up our provisions from around 50% uh, to 55%. Uh, that's the background on it. Nothing to do on collection, nothing to do on uh, 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 security. We have continued to, we will continue to show the robust collections and continue to show the robust recovery uh, from NP accounts. That will not change. So, Shubhranshu, just on a question on curing, what we treated as, you know, rollbacks from 31 to 60 to 1 to 30 or uh, 1 to 30 to, you know, current. See, these numbers used to be higher in the past because the flows were also a little higher. Today, given the fact that we have contained the flows largely, so the curing is also lesser. So what we are typically seeing is whenever a loan gets into a 31 to 60 day bucket, you will generally see about 90% of that loan stabilizing in that bucket. So they don't roll forward also. You will see about 5% of those loans rolling forward and 5% of those loans getting back to uh, lower buckets. So this has been the last, I would probably say, 3-4 quarters averages. If you go before that, the number used to be, the stabilization used to be more like 85%. The rollback used to be 10%. The Flow forward uh, was about you know seven eight percent, and you know these numbers were a little uh, higher earlier. But last four quarters, yeah, largely uh, about five percent of roll forward, five percent of uh, roll back, and about ninety percent of stabilization. So we are almost curing everything that's getting rolled forward. Close to that. Close to that, yes. Thank you. This was very helpful. Thanks. Thank you. The last question is from the line of Arvin R. from Sundaram Alternates. Please go ahead. Hi, hi sir. Um, I, you know, congratulations on the new set of numbers. Uh, just start like a few questions. So, uh, could you give me a bit uh, information about, uh, you know, uh, EDLR, MPLR, and uh, you know, fixed rate borrowing? You know, in in terms of uh, percentage of borrowing, you know, can you give uh, some color on it? So, Arvind, this is a question about fixed versus variable rate borrowings? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fixed and uh, EBLR and MCLR, if you can give that too. Yeah. Uh, see, fixed number we have given, I think we are at about 29% borrowing is fixed. So, I would say 70-30. 70, 70 variable and about 30% fixed. Um, in On the universe of EBR versus MCLR, I think EBR will probably be 10-15%. Most of it is MCLR. It is only those banks who have very high MCLRs. You know, their MCLRs are more than our uh, overall borrowing cost, which is where we have gone ahead with EBR. I would probably put that number at about 10-15% and or maybe 15-20%. 80% of our loans will be on MCLR. And most of these uh, MCLR loans are also 6-month or 1-year MCLR. So we don't go with the 3-month MCLR and all that. Sure, sure. And uh, this income from securitization, like... Uh is it booked in interest income itself or is it part of the other or the fee income or whatever? No, no, it is part of the interest on loan portfolio. That's typically treated as a loan portfolio and treated as borrowing. So you will see that on the interest line, both on the income and interest expenses. Even the differential that we get? Yes. So there is there is no upfronting of incomes at all, Arvind, in the securitization transaction. It is for all practical purposes under India's treated as part of your loan book, treated as part of a borrowing. So it will come 
The 24% that we charge to the customer will come as interest on the loan portfolio. The 9, 9.5% that we pay to the institution will come as a, as a borrowing cost. And the differential flows into PVT. Sure. Oh, oh, directly goes to the PVT. Okay. Okay. And uh, and just one last question. Um, so, EAM growth has been phenomenal, like in, you know, uh, in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Uh, whereas, whereas it has been like, a little slightly lower uh, in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, uh, is it because of the branch addition that's happening in the you know Andhra Pradesh and Telangana happening in the existing clusters, whereas in like other markets it's happening in the newer clusters, or any other reason for it? Uh, the reason is simple: the, the 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 team formed and the collection pattern what we see in uh, Andhra and Telangana uh, makes us more. Uh, optimistic to open more branches and recruit more people at the geographies. But uh, Tamil Nadu is not lacking. Uh, you, you, have, you, you would have seen Tamil Nadu branches also going up. And this next financial year, you will see a lot of investments in Tamil Nadu. Karnataka is stabilizing. Uh, during COVID, uh, we, we had an impact in uh, Karnataka slightly comparing to the other three states of South. So we, uh, that's a prudent practice of five star. If we see any kind of uh, uh, slip, we will take our, our good time to rectify that and move forward. So we are not in hurry. But good news is, I mean, saying in last few calls that Karnataka stabilization is uh, is there uh, to stay. So now uh, it's a time that we will be investing more branches in Karnataka too, because the geographies are uh, quite bigger. It's a bigger state. Uh, so that's the background. No other uh, uh, background on split of our branches in South. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. As that was the last question, I would now hand the conference over to Ms. Gayatri Shivaram for closing comments. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining the call. And uh, thank you to the management of Five Star for giving us this opportunity to host the call. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all from Five Star uh, team at from Chennai. So hope to meet you all in Q4 uh, 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 earnings call. More, more with more with uh, vibrant numbers. Thank you all. Thank you. On behalf of JM Financial, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>